Hey, it's Rich Bontrager Trigger. Welcome to uh, How to Kill It on Stage, How to Rock It on Stage. So I hope you're really with me today. I hope you're having a great time. I, and we are going to get into um, everything you need to do to rock it on stage. So everything has changed the last couple of weeks. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out the large stages, the public stages have completely gone away. Uh, how many of you, show me in the comments, how many of you had had bookings, settings, you had something set up to go do live in a real place? Uh, show me with a little uh, comment statement, uh, something that you uh, had something blow up, that you lost a client, that you lost a speaking gig or opportunity. I have. In fact, I've got two more still coming up, and that stage is gone. This stage is now our stage. Uh, this stage is now going to be the way that we live and speak and share. So we've got to realize that we need to rock this stage. Also, this stage is not a small stage. I want you to change your frame of mind with me here today as we get rolling here. We have to realize that this stage is actually big. We're used to big arenas. We're used to being in big stadiums. But it's actually a big stage. Yeah, you were booked. You had it, and it's gone, isn't it? And it's really painful to have your calendar blow up, especially when we've been trained to be on the big stage and we've been trained to talk and interact with a live crowd. We, we as speakers feed off the live crowd. We as speakers um, often interact and we get better the more the crowd participates. But now we're stuck into a room, in an office, in a studio, and we're by ourselves. So let me tell you the reason I'm doing this webinars for the next couple of weeks. We're going to be doing this. I want you to join me every week. I'm sharing for my 25 years as a broadcaster. I've been in the studio talking to myself for years. I've been behind the microphone at football games, basketball games learning how to communicate and make it come alive in a dramatic, exciting way. So change your thinking now that we're not on a small stage. This virtual stage is now mega big. You can go all over the world with this message you have, with your podcast, with your webinar. You can have a virtual packed out audience every time you turn on your web camera and when you do your presentations. So I know there's a lot of people who are down on not having the big seminars, not having the big events. I, I know it's really hard to wrap your head around losing that. But now join me in embracing the stage, the virtual stage. So I'm going to share some things today. And by the way, we are working on a resource here. And I'm going to give you a free resource next week for coming on back. This resource is gonna be packed full of some of the things we're gonna go over. It's gonna have more information. It's gonna to have tools. It's gonna to have hot links. You will get it absolutely free for coming back next week. And it's gonna give you options to expand what you're already doing well. I know many of you are doing things well, and I know you wanna up it to the next higher, better game. So the stage has changed. We're gonna be better at this. How do we get better at this? We're going to start, first of all, let's just talk about the fact that if you're going to be on camera, you need to present yourself like you're really on the full, full stage. Talk with your body when you're on stage. The number one thing about being on these virtual stages right now is you need to present yourself like you're on the real, real stage. Use your hands. I can't talk. I can't present without using my hands. It's impossible. If you want to see me freak out on stage, tie my hands, tether me to a corded microphone, and make me stand still behind a podium. I will die a slow, ugly death. I love the earpieces that come over. I love the hands free so I can move, I can talk, I can use my complete body. The first thing you need to understand is on this new virtual stage, Give your full body into your presentation. I was watching some webinars this week for some other materials, and they're boring. They're just flat out boring. They're, they're, they're trying to be so professional, so cautious. They're frozen cardboard cutouts that are talking, but they're not giving you their, their passion, their energy. They're, they're not giving you their full 
uh, everything they can bring to us. Um, some of you I've seen in action. Man, you know how to wind it up and go. Can you do the same thing when you're in your office, when you're in your room? Bring your fullness to life. I would love to see that you have that ability. So one way to do this is practice with videotape. Practice off air. Set up your room, set up your office the way you're going to do this, and actually practice and videotape yourself and get used to coming alive. As a broadcaster, we did this. And I had to learn how to record myself, listen to myself, play back. And I'm going to talk about your voice in a few moments. I'm going to talk about using your voice as part of that uh, dramatic power of being on the stage. There's so much more you can do with your voice than you could ever, ever realize. And I, I want to help you do that better. So I'm going to share from my insights of that. But your body presentation is huge. Also, uh, dress the part. Uh, a lot of the webinars, a lot of the things I'm seeing out there this week, we are so casual. We've been cooped up in our house for over a week. We're living in our hoodies, we're living in our Zuba pants, or whatever you're wearing, take the extra time to put on a good shirt, put on a good blouse, do your hair, do your makeup. Yeah, there's a lot of casualness in this now. You can do a lot of relatable, casual things in the time and place for that. But if you're gonna put on a webinar, if you're gonna put on a summit, if you're gonna put on a coaching experience for people, you gotta dress the part. That doesn't mean put on a costume. That doesn't mean you're going to fake it. What it does mean, though, is excuse me, you need to dress the part. Now, think of your audience. If you're talking to high professionals, which I know Berta does a lot of this, uh, you got to dress the part. You're in the CEO. You're, you're, you're in the top executive boardroom, and you need to dress the part, whether it's in their office live, whether it's at a conference on stage, now virtually, if they're gonna to come to your webinar, if you want them to download, click, if you want them to buy into a program incentive, you better dress the part that reflects them because they wanna see you as a professional. Now, if you're doing youth, teenagers type stuff, hey, a concert t-shirt will work, <laughs> all right? There's different ways of communicating, but dress for the occasion. Now, when you're dressing the part, let's talk about green screens and special effects for a second. This is really, really important. If you're going to do this on camera, on uh, the video like we're doing now, this is a green screen. My wall is green. Uh, and it's a fabric. You can buy these real easy. You can go to many fabric shops, get some green screen, spend a, just a tiny bit of money. It's really inexpensive. Uh, yes, you can order from big ones. I'm going to put that in that booklet for you and show you some uh, great green screens to get. But you can get these green screens, mount them so they're nice, clean, flat. And then if you're using green, don't wear green on camera. If you wear green on camera and you're using a green screen behind you, your body will disappear and your head will be floating and it will be like you're a floating puppet and it will freak everybody out and they will not be joining you for your next webinar. So you have to realize what you wear does matter if you're doing green screen, especially if you are. If you're gonna do a blue screen, you cannot wear blue. So today if I was doing a blue screen, I would be a floating head. So visuals matter, color matters, your clothing matters as you do all this. And so make sure that you rock the stage, create your stage as you do this more and more. Figure out what your backdrop is going to be. I, I really encourage you invest a little money and do the green screen. On the Zoom call here, there's a button. We'll show you next week on how to actually change your green screen live. Very often you do your uh, YouTube videos and you do your podcast and you have to do post-production work to drop these things in on the back side. On Zoom calls, you can do this virtually right now. Uh, we were on a podcast the other day, we were on a Zoom call and the individual had nice windows. It looked like they were sitting in their living room with windows out the back uh, and it worked. So you can change to fit your environment, to fit your style, to make you rock the stage. It adds to your feel, it adds to the environment. This is my stage, whether it's virtual or real, it will help you play into that. Now, the other thing about these virtual stages is you can use them for information, like you got information up on the screen, you can use it in different ways to your advantage. So take time, learn things. And all the way through this, by the way, today, I want you to ask me questions because next week I want to answer some of your real questions. 
So if you didn't know, I have no idea about green screens. If you want to learn more about this visual side, send me a note here in the chat box. Send me an email, rich at richbondrigger.net. We'll follow up next week and we'll go deeper into this because it's really exciting to use technology to your advantage to make your screen larger than life. Now, let's go to talk about the voice for a second. Your voice is your instrument. Your voice is so darn important to your career. Uh, I'm a professional broadcaster. I've been in the broadcast for 25 years. I know how to protect my voice. I know how to use it. Do not shout in your microphone. Do not scream in your microphone. Use your voice to have energy, influx. Use it in a way that's going to help you communicate your stories, your messages. Um, I've heard a lot of people that they have a very quiet, whispery voice. And then they get really excited, and then it's almost like a scream. Uh, your microphone will explode. Your audio will be bad. So learn how to use your voice to your advantage. Also, uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, take a drink. This is your best friend if you're going to be a professional communicator speaker. Whether it's on live stage, on video, wherever you're at, uh, here's a couple of things not to drink a lot of, especially before you go on. Do not drink Mountain Dew heavy caffeinated items. Do not slam coffee before you get on the microphone. And do not start slamming Red Bulls uh, before you get on. Because caffeine restricts your voices. It restricts your vocal cords. If you're going to rock it on stage, you need your voice to be finely tuned instrument. And you need to make sure it's ready to go. I love singing. I love rocking to my tunes in my car. If I'm driving to a speaking engagement, if I'm getting ready to go, I'll have my music on to get my energy going. But I'm not belting out the tunes. I'm not rocking out to the songs because that's going to affect what I can do with my voice. So your voice is your career. It's your livelihood. If my voice had blown out years ago, I would not be in this business 25 years later. Think about what you do with your voice. Think about how you use your voice and learn how to use it as a fine-tuned instrument. The, the other thing about using your voice is this is where the magic happens. So many of us work on the products, on the imaging, on, uh, on what it is we're selling. Let me tell you, if you don't have a voice that's going to be clearly communicating, clearly telling people what they have, what they don't have, what they need, if your voice is not rocking for you, it doesn't matter what you say, they're not buying your stuff. They're not coming back to you. Uh, years ago, some of us are old enough to remember this. If not, you can Google it and find it out there. The Brady Bunch, Bobby Brady, was reaching puberty and his voice was cracking. It was a really embarrassing, really funny episode. Learn how to use your voice so it doesn't crack, doesn't pop. Another thing with this is invest in a good microphone. A lot of people nowadays are popping on the computer. They're all running to get on stage right now. Everyone's trying to get on the virtual stage. That's why I'm doing this. There's so many people crying out for help of how to do this. So they're using their laptops or their desktop computers and turning on the open ear microphone. And you can do that for a while, but you still, you, you, you catch the full room. You, you, you totally pick up every tweak, every sound, every whistle. Uh, I was on a call this morning with an individual. They stopped the interview. They actually stopped the interview because their children were making noise downstairs because everyone's home right now. And they had to come back and reset, and we picked up the conversation. So make sure that open air doesn't think, catch everything. Get a microphone. Uh, I actually ordered this from Amazon in that booklet next week. I'm going to highlight several microphone recommendations. They're not that expensive. So go out and get yourself a good microphone and get a boom for it so it can hover and it can float. If your microphone, it doesn't matter how good your voice is, if your microphone is banging, bopping, picking up other room sounds, if it hits the table, you'll hear the table shake and vibrate, and it takes away from your sound here. So invest in a good microphone that's worth having to help you rock the stage, to help you really nail it, because this will help you. It's going to be cleaner audio. It's not going to be the echo. It's not going to shake and vibrate. As you speak, you're also going to learn what letters pop off. Uh, James and I were doing something today. Uh, Going to pick on you, love on you a little bit, James. So give me a thumbs up. Uh, 
we, we were doing an audio podcast today and James and I both stutter. That was part of our conversation. Now people pop their P's. They smack their S's. There's different letters that people do. Get a windshield. I've been doing this long enough. I, I really don't need it that often. But you see this in uh, recording studios and you see this a lot of places. Get a little windshield. It, it came with this whole kit I got. The windshield will keep you from your P's and your S's popping all over the place and it will cut that down a little bit. It, it's a small investment to up your game and take you to a different level where the other podcasters, other webinar people are not going. Don't hug the microphone, okay? See, I just bumped it, didn't do anything. But don't, like, eat the microphone. You can leave it away from you. You can have it a little bit of a distance. They're made to pick up your sound naturally. You don't have to scream again. You don't, it's just part of it. Um, learn by practicing. Uh, I, I keep saying this over and over. Practice, practice, practice. Record yourself um, and learn how to do this with a good microphone. So again, we're going to talk more about that. We're going to talk about the voice technique, about storytelling. How many of you in the chat box would like to learn more about storytelling through the camera lens? How would you like to learn how to be better at this and making your stories come alive? Because you're doing TV now, but you're talking to yourself in a room. And it looks and feels kind of nuts, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Talking to yourself and trying to make it sound interesting is something you have to learn to do, especially if you're going to do a podcast. A lot of podcasters are just talking. Some are interviews, but you still have to be a good storyteller, a good interviewer. Oh, that reminds me. Interviewing. We're going to talk a lot about interviewing. I have seen some horrible interviews uh, the last couple of weeks. And if we're going to be doing webinars, interviews, discussion panels, uh, you need to know how to interview. So rocking the stage in that area will be a big, big help to you in learning how to do that. But learn the microphone, learn the stage, and learn those things. Now, one of the other areas is going to be lighting. This is an area I get probably a lot, a lot of questions on is how do you light yourself? Uh, natural light is something you can use very effectively. If you don't have any lighting equipment, Move your computer for recording purposes. Move, move your iPhone, your cell phone, and mount yourself in front of a window. Open it up. Uh, you don't want glare beating down on you. You don't want to look like you just got a sunburn. I've seen, I've seen that too. And you, you, want, you want a nice warm glow on your face. A lot of us are doing it in our offices right now. And it's really hard to get near a window sometime. So you may have to find a different space to record and do your stages. But get in front of a window. The window has a nat nice natural glow to it. And with that glow, you have a natural color to it. Now, I just invested in a new spotlight uh, for this. They're made for webcams. They're made for web shows. It has three different settings on it. Uh, you can have a warm. You can have a slight off color. And you have a different tint. Uh, you can also get gel colors. So if you're trying to do something intentionally to change the mood or the environment, your lighting is really important. Uh, in my uh, booklet, I'm going to show you a lighting chart of how to do this. Uh, because you don't want light coming from the sides and turning you into two-faced where one side is dark and one side is light. Uh, people are not going to watch that long. Okay? They want to see you. They want to see your eyes pop. They want to see your expression. They want to see your smile. So the direction of the light is really, really important. And often we just do the best we can, which I understand. But to up our games, we have to be able to up it in a way that enhances our presentations. When you're on stage, we don't even think about it as speakers. Someone else is running the lights for us. They go through the spotlight check. They make sure the auditorium is lit well. And we just naturally do our thing. You have to be your own studio engineer a little bit here, which is new for a lot of us. You have to figure out what's going to work. So if you're going to record and you have your professional light or if you have a light, even take a lamp, pull off the light cover, okay? Just put the light bulb in front of your camera, and that light bulb will glow the whole room so it's a nice, even glow. You don't want it filtered. 
In, in the information I'm going to give you, I'm going to have a simple layout, camera, light, light, so it gives you stage lighting. I took stage lighting years ago in theater and lighting, and it helped me immensely back then. Uh, we need to learn how to do theater lighting all over again if you're going to be on camera and being doing these webinars. Lighting, really, really important. It's a very foundational piece of this. Um, early on, you can go back to some of my early YouTubes. Go to my YouTube channel. Look at some of my early ones. Some of them were not the best. Okay? I didn't do it always right either. That's okay. Uh, you live and learn. You keep improving this game. Uh, and so go out and take these steps and improve how to rock your stage this way. As we get into this, I also want to hear what platforms you're using. There's a lot of different platforms you can use. Um, Zoom is the one we're on right now. Zoom can be very in interactive. We, we could have you all talking, sharing. We're going to do that in the coming weeks. We're going to make it much more interactive. I encourage you to make your webinars interactive. I encourage you to make your podcast interactive. Uh, make it so it's multidimensional and engages people. I coach people as a uh, speaking coach on breaking the glass. Right now, I'm doing all the talking today for the first one, but uh, there's an individual unspoken wall here. My job is to break the glass, to come through to you and make it feel like you're in the room with me, we're having a conversation together, and we're having a good time. So that's part of the mystery here is that we get to do all that, right? Like right now I have the gallery setting going, okay? So I can see uh, you with your images, but I can't see you because your cameras are off. Now, if you want to turn them on, that's fine. That's cool. It'd be great. But you need to make this interactive. You need to make this in a way that you're really talking to somebody. Um, here's a real good trick for you. If you're getting new at doing all this podcasting webinar and being on camera, uh, take a picture of someone you love, someone you know, and put it in front of your monitor. Talk to them. Uh, for years when I was back disc jockeying music and I was in a studio, early morning, I, I did the overnight shifts when I first began my career. There's nobody in this building. I am by myself. To make it sound like I was having a good time and talking to somebody, I put a picture of my wife and my kids and I would pretend like I was having a good time. Um, it helps you learn how to present on camera in a whole different way. So as you do this, learn that the camera is your friend. I'm, I've coached several people, they're so afraid of it. They're so afraid of it. However, once they realize the camera can be their friend, it's a whole new ball game. So make this an experience for people. And that's gonna be one of our big topics every week. Um, change your webinars, change your seminars, change your YouTube channel videos, whatever it is you're doing, change them into experiences. Uh, offer free gifts, offer incentives, offer Q&A dialogue, offer time that it's an experience for everyone to share in community. One of the big things we're hearing right now is um, we're all locked in on lockdown, most of us. Community and the need for people is so big right now. Think about the power of you opening up yourself and your podcast, your webinars to build community. We're gonna do that through this, through this uh, how to rock the stage virtually. We're gonna open up a Facebook group just for this. And we don't want you to interact with us. We want you to ask questions with us. We want you to post things so we can encourage you and make this better. We're gonna get that ready this next week. We're gonna formally launch it off. You'll get the chance to opt into that so we can build community because we can't just do it in one setting. You need to do ongoing, continuous relationship and build community into your webinars. You want to build these relationships. Berta and I met uh, through LinkedIn. Berta and I were on a virtual connection. Berta and I then met when she invited me to join her on a real stage, and we, we met there. We have now been on some webcasts together and hung out virtually. Uh, now we virtually chit chat almost every day through uh, texting, email, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, it's real life conversation happening with people. 
Think about what you can do to leverage yourself as you're gonna kill it on stage and turn it into an interactive experiential event. Touch their heart, touch their soul, touch their emotion. Don't just give them data, don't just give them information, but do something that's really going to help them uh, grow more and more as an individual. One of the phone calls I just hung up, I mean, just before we went live, I hung up with a friend in Minnesota uh, and they said, we need to help people get through these dark times because people are flipping out. People are having a hard time making it. And they, they, they threw it back at me. They, they completely threw, you need to help people, Rich. Have a good time through your internet talks and through your webcast. You need to help people feel they're loved and valued. However you can do that through your webcast, you're going to rock it. People will tune back in and tune back in. So you're not just giving information. You're not just selling a program. You're actually becoming a virtual friend through these connections out there. I'm going to wrap up with one more here, and then we're going to uh, get you set up for next week. And again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties today with the beginning of this, but uh, there's been some wonky things happening, and Zoom is way over crashed right now. But I, I want to let you talk about time. If you're going to do webinars, if you're going to do podcasts, if you're going to do interview shows, if you're going to open up this virtual platform, set a time to start and set a time to finish and hold to it. I've seen a lot of webinars lately this week go really long because people so starve for affection. They're starved for that need for human contact and interaction, but it's going to actually hurt you in the end. Make your content and make your presentation so valuable to them, they want to come back from the next one. How many of you love a good cliffhanger at the end of a TV series? How, how much do you talk about it in the off season of who's going to do what? What's going to happen? Are, are, are they coming back? People love cliffhangers. They love to be hung on the hook and dangling out there because we're curious people. So don't give them everything at one time. Use this platform, use this stage by giving them enough, giving them tools, and leave them with a little bit to say, you got to come back next week. And part of that is honoring your time clock. And honoring people's time was going to be a huge factor for you in making this long term and making this a career. People are not going to stay on for a three hour call and figure that they got good content. An hour, half hour, make it count. And then say, hey, if you got questions, email me, follow me, get on the next call. And do things like that to say, our time is done for the day. Thank you for joining us. Come back next time and I'll answer some of your questions and we'll open up the dialogue further. Um, I sat through one the other day that went an extra hour and a half. An extra hour and a half. It was nowhere near that. In fact, the the host of it actually said I was supposed to be somewhere else 30 minutes ago, but I stayed. So they blew off another appointment to stay on the air and go longer. Promote it, create it, and end it in a way that helps people uh, know that you value their time. Respect and value. If I show you that I value your time by wrapping it up at a good time and giving you good content, you're going to know that I'm going to come back locked and loaded the next time with even better content. And it's still going to be a certain amount of time for a certain amount of energy, and you'll get everything you want and need out of it. So these are some of the basics of rocketing on stage. I just want to do kind of a basic flyover because there's so much to get into now with the virtual stage. But hear me again as we get going, as we begin this journey together. This stage is bigger than the old stage. I know it sounds crazy. You get the chance to tap into more audiences all over the world right now. You get to do things that you have never done before on a platform that's never been opened up like ever before. This used to be just reserved for broadcasters. We now have this chance to step up on a stage and rock it every time we turn the microphone. You get the chance to grow your audience, to grow your followers, to, to, to grow, grow your influence. You get the chance to do it in a way that has never, ever been done before. And 
the next several weeks, we're still gonna be on lockdown. Most of us across the country, we're still gonna have to live virtually to do our business and careers. Don't see that as a negative. See that as the best positive in the world for what you're doing. If you wanna open up into this medium, if you wanna get more virtual and open up the podcasting and the seminars, if you do this well, if you learn how to rock these stages now, when people get out, when people really need the resources, you're gonna be so set. They're gonna be so ready to hit them right where they're at. You'll already have a following. You'll already know how to do it. They will click, follow, call you, and you will get live speaking gigs because of what you have done virtually. You can have both stages work for you now. You don't have to rely just on that stage like you did before and travel all over the country. So take this time to make this really work for you. Turn this time into learning the virtual stage and learning how to really, really crush it. Next week, I want some of your questions. So this week, your homework assignment is email me, rich at richbontrager.net. I want to know what's really going to help you with the virtual. Is it camera? Is it clothing? Is it uh, uh, techniques? Is it how do you hook people into a conversation back and forth? How many is too many on a Zoom call to make it really interactive? I was on one the other day. There were 70 people on the Zoom call. You can't talk to everybody personally in a Zoom call like that, but you can do breakouts. There's ways of making this work for you. Um, how do you pull off a summit this way? How do you pull off, ask your questions so I can best serve you and help you? Also, I'm going to invite different people to join me as experts, and we're going to make this interactive so you can share some of what you've learned about how this goes down as well. It's not just going to be a one way dialogue from my experience as a broadcaster. We're going to actually expand this so we can help you in real time do this as well. We're going to do this again next week, Wednesday night. We're going to do it Wednesday, and we're going to do it. At instead of four o'clock mountain time, we're going to move this to uh, five o'clock mountain time. I'm going to sacrifice my dinner time to help you because it's better for the country. Uh, I did have some people that said they wanted to join us, but it's dinner time where they're at. Uh, and so it makes it a little bit tougher. But to make this interactive, uh, we're going to change it to five o'clock mountain time next week. If you want to make sure you, you don't miss it, you'll get another invite, you'll follow it, you'll see it on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Follow on all the social media platforms, and we'll make sure we don't miss you in all of this. And be ready next week. Next week, you guys are going to get the first printing, the first booklet of How the Rocket on the Virtual Stage. This is going to help you launch off in a whole different direction besides what you get here. You're going to get that absolutely free. And all these webinars are free. I'm not going to ask a dime of you. This is not a pitch. This is not a way to try to squeeze anybody. Uh, we are all in this together, and I simply want to share from my experience as a broadcaster, as a communicator, to help you rock your stage wherever you're at. So get in touch with me. Follow up with me. Again, I apologize for the uh, technical glitches at the beginning of all this, but we're going to rock it even better next week. So I'm going to say good night. Have a great week. Stay safe with everybody. And any questions you have for me offline, again, send them to me. Rich at richbontrager.net. God bless, and we'll see you next time.